Hello, and welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to be talking about a little bit of tricky syntax that I uh, used in a Docker file on stream, and a couple of people were like, what's up with that? Why are you doing that? So we'll explain it today. Uh, let's jump into that one. All right, so we're just going to set up a small Docker file, and it's kind of going to be, you know, <laughs> not feature complete because... Uh, <laughs> We don't actually care about making a future complete Docker file to demo this today. Um, but the syntax that I was using is this little colon backslash new line and then commands joined by ampersands. Uh, so like maybe, you know, we're making a virtual env or something and we're installing packages into that. VM bin pip install dash r requirements dot text. Um, and this was the syntax that I had, I had run. Oops, semicolon, colon. And a couple people asked, well, why would you do that? Uh, so let's look at the alternative. This is what I used to write before I, I learned about this little trick. Uh, and these two syntaxes do exactly the same thing. They're just, there's just some advantages to not doing it the first way. Uh, pip install dash r requirements requirements dot text. And of course you would probably pass like no cache and ignore <laughs> ignore pip version warning whatever blah 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 uh, to slightly speed up pip. But in this world we'll assume that there's some environment variable that already does that for us. But anyway, these are the two the two alternatives and. You might say, well, Anthony, this one is only two lines and this one is four lines and lines of code are bad, so you shouldn't do that. And um, I mean, you could say that, I guess. Um, but the reason that you would want to use this syntax is the same reason that you would use trailing commas in Python or uh, other languages similar, uh, in that if you need to change these lines by adding or removing a command, it will be a minimal diff. So let's let's demo that. So what I did here is I just made I just made a git repo so that we can easily see the diff. And if we open this up, uh, so let's say that you know a new requirement came along and we needed to install some development tooling, and maybe we put that inside requirements dev .text. Although you know of course you could just do this, but for sake of discussion, let's say that we have to add a separate command here. Uh, and so in, in the colon syntax version, you would just add your separate command here. Uh, in this version, you would similarly do that, except notice that I had to modify, oh, we forgot a backslash there. Notice that I had to modify this command by adding this ampersand backslash to it. And if we go look at the diff for this, uh, that's the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's left over from streaming. Uh, that's the wrong oh, new line the file. Here's here's the actual diff. Okay, save. There we go. So you'll notice when I used this syntax here, uh, we only added one line here. But in this syntax here, we had to delete a line and then add a new line and then add our additional line at the bottom. And uh, this may have changed the git blame on this line. Of course, I'm the only contributor here, so it <laughs> didn't really change anything. Uh, it may have made it more difficult to trace this commit to see like where did that particular, particular code come from because we modified it here. Um, and your diff is you know less clean. You're, you're modifying stuff that's somewhat unrelated to your change. And so that's why it's preferred. And the follow-up question to that was, well, Anthony, <laughs> what is this colon? What does it do? Uh, and it is a shell built-in, so if we do man bash, oh, how did I find this last time? Uh, is there a way to get to the built-ins? <laughs> oh, maybe built-ins in all caps? No. Uh, here it is, I found it. <laughs> so colon in bash and other shells is a no-op sort of thing. It's, you can think of it as an alias for true, which, you know, makes arguments, but uh, doesn't do anything with them and always exit zero. In the same way, uh, colon does that. And you can see that 
exit zero. You can kind of use it as a comment in some places. Uh, I've seen that get used. So in like a shell script where you might have, you know, user bin and bash, and you do set dash eu exo pipe fail. You might do like, now I am making a virtual env, and then virtual env, the env, or whatever. And then when you run that, a set dash x makes it so that it, it prints that out. Whereas if you had just a normal comment, uh, that won't show up in your output. Maybe you want the output, but anyway, that's another use for colon. Um, and in our Docker file, we're just neatly calling that at the beginning, at the end, to kind of like make these lines unchangeable. But anyway, hopefully this was insightful. Hopefully you learned something today. Uh, if you have additional questions, feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to me on Twitter or show up my Twitch stream or Discord or whatever way you want to reach me. But thank you for watching and I'll see you guys around in the next one.